All right, everybody, I'm going to go ahead and give you a slow down tutorial on True Abutment's Dentrue software. Now, for those of you who don't know, True Abutment has a software that is designed to make digital dentures for free. It is a pretty powerful software if you know how to use it. It does have quite a few little bugs, but I know they are actively developing and still working on this software and they have a whole team of developers. So the first thing that you're gonna do is download the Dentrue software and start a new patient and load the appropriate files. You need an upper, a lower, and it manda mandates a bite scan. Um, so this is going to be a copy denture. It's kind of like a refit copy denture. Let me show you how I mean. So here I'm loading the um, upper, lower, and bite STL files. And now I'm going to go ahead and select all the kind of stuff that I want for this patient um, as it relates to tooth library setup. You're going to tell it here, I just want to do a single upper denture. You could do both arches if you wanted to, or you could do a single lower. If it's an immediate denture, you would hit yes there, but in this case it's not. Copy denture, yes. That means you scanned an existing denture. And here I am going through and picking the tooth shape and library that I want for this particular patient. This is all personal preference, whether you want zero degree teeth, uh, lingualized and all sorts of tooth setups. If you want, you know, square, oval or uh, universal teeth, you could pick the, the kind of the, the mold that you want for your tooth. And then in addition to that, you could pick standard light or strong festooning. Uh, for occlusion type, I usually just pick no change, especially if it's a copy denture. And then you could actually, it automatically does the posterior paddle seal for you. And you want to print with support bars if you're 3D printing. So you can select that and then pick the printer that you're using or the one that's closest to it. And then what it's going to do is in step number one, it wants you to um, basically align the bite. And this is why it, it mandates a bite scan. If you do not have the ability to export a bite, I could show you how to export a bite um, later on in the video. But here is uh, essentially the relined denture, scanned 360 degrees in my hand, put back in the mouth and then scanned in the bite. Now, if you want to alter the vertical, you could scan an open bite and then pin it right here at the new vertical. And that is totally cool but you're gonna basically select three common points between each one of these models. And you're gonna, um, once you select three, that is going to be enough. And you could basically go down and hit match lower. And that is the indication that you have enough points. And then you're gonna go ahead, once you hit match lower, find three common spots. Again, it could be, um, you know, it could be a soft tissue spot if you have a good soft tissue spot, or it could be a, a tooth spot, it doesn't matter. Um, and if you were doing an upper and lower copy denture, you would just have the, the 360 degree scan of the upper and the 360 degree scan of the lower. And then you put it back in the patient's mouth to establish a bite. And you could even alter that bite, change the vertical, get a new CR, um, and design at that new vertical here. Here it's um, wanting you to verify that the match is good. This is a pretty good match. You're looking for that kind of in and out mixture of um, spots here. So you could see the kind of the red and orange blend. And then you're gonna go ahead and hit next here. Okay, so the step number one of the design, once you pin your bite, is to mark your borders. And to do that, you're gonna just click um, all along your borders. Don't go too big with your spacing between your balls. You wanna keep them relatively close together. And you wanna make sure that you don't drop off the edge or fall into a severe undercut or anything weird like that. This is the importance of getting good scans when you're doing your uh, relined denture and you're scanning that in your hand 360 degrees. Make sure to check out my YouTube tutorials on the proper scan pattern to do that. But here we're, we're staying pretty close to um, the previous ball step. And then once you get to the end, you double click on the first ball and go ahead and then do the lower. Now, even though we're not designing a lower denture, it still mandates for you to do it on a lower arch. And it's just part of the algorithm that they use to um, position the upper teeth. So here it is very important to have the retromolar pad scanned on the lower arch, which is hard to do. This, this is an intraoral scan here. If you had trouble doing that, you could take a physical impression and scan a physical impression. Um, but whatever you need to do, you want to make sure that you get your landmarks here. And I'll show you in the next step uh, what landmarks are super important for the digital design process of this kind of copy denture, if you will. 
Okay, so now we've outlined the lower, even though nothing's gonna be fitting to that surface and you do not have the ability to do uh, partial dentures in the software, um, it is just there to help with the occlusal plane. It is going to then, what it does, it's kind of cool, it's gonna virtually pour up that upper denture and give you like a, almost like a soft tissue model. And now it's going to go ahead and ask you for landmarks. The first landmark on the upper is the incisive papilla. And so you're gonna go ahead and double click right in your incisive papilla area and then you're going to do um, kind of tuberosity to tuberosity or hammerlur notch to hammerlur notch and then on the lower it's going to want the retromolar pad now it's just asking you one last time hey are you sure you want these teeth i usually just hit confirm you could make changes um, at that point and then it goes through an ai database uh, where it looks at the landmarks, it looks at the teeth you selected, and it does literally take about four to five minutes. It's best to just to walk away, get a coffee, uh, go do a hygiene check, do something else, because watching this thing for five minutes is pain, painful. But you have to remember what it's doing here. It's, it's literally reverse pouring that upper denture. It's going ahead and looking at the landmarks, setting up a, a nice upper arch for you. And then here it is. So here, here's what it's basically doing. It's gonna ask you a few verification steps before you go ahead and get to the actual part where you could start manipulating the teeth. And it asks you for this kind of, uh, almost like a fox plane, if you will, that you can um, select and move and you could control, you could rotate it or move it. If you hold shift, you'll rotate it. If you just click it, you can move it up and down. Let me show you um, kind of how I mean. There's a midline uh, bar, that red stripe, um, it does a really good job at finding the, the midline. Uh, typically that's based off of where you click the incisive papilla. And you're able to manipulate that based off of the desired future occlusal plane. And it just is gonna confirm the tooth size for you. And when you hit continue here, um, it's going to then take you to the tooth setup tab. And here we go. It's just gonna be a little bit of a wait here as well. Um, maybe like two to three minutes. Now we're at the tooth setup tab. And you know, at first glance, it's like, holy smokes, what did it do? But it's actually really powerful. And let me kind of explain some of the tools that you have. The first thing is you could select based off of those green um, teeth um, kind of models on the lower, you could pick how many teeth you want to move at any given time, whether it's the posterior quadrants, the anterior. If you want to um, move all the teeth, you could do that you have all these kind of really cool features to fine tune the, the arch setup. And it's really worth playing around with this. If, if you uh, hold shift, you're gonna be able to rotate all the teeth or however many teeth are selected in the cream color. Um, they, they, they're able to be rotated. If you hold space bar, you get this really cool compass. And I really like moving teeth using the space bar and moving these arrows. Um, it's really powerful. And if you turn on the old denture, you could kind of see, hey, where was my old occlusal plane? Um, where, were, where were eight and nine? And this is kind of where um, this becomes really powerful because you're not like copying the old worn out teeth. You're putting brand new teeth in, but you're just using that old denture as kind of like a guideline. Now, sometimes it's helpful in the mouth to add a little bit of composite. Like let's say they wore down the incisal edge of um, eight and nine just to establish a guideline for you of where you want that incisal edge to be in the future denture. Also, if you wanted to change the vertical, you could have scanned your bite at an open vertical. You could use, you know, anything to open the vertical, whether it's um, leaf gauge or, you know, aluwax, some dead soft wax, whatever you want to use, some type of triad, and you could um, take a CR record at a new vertical and then you would be able to wax the arch right here at that new vertical. It's super powerful. Okay, so here we have now um, all these kind of really powerful features, including um, the tooth compass down at the bottom where you see you could highlight just one posterior um, sextant at a time, and you could make sure you hold that shift button down and you could move those individually um, side by side. You could also, um, actually move individual teeth as well. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, and again, you could turn on and off the old denture by hitting that pink. It looks like kind of like a, almost looks like a record base on the right-hand side of your compass. And that, by the way, the right-hand side is all your object browsers of um, upper and lower teeth, the gingiva. Um, you could turn them on and off and, and scroll through them if, um, if, if you want. And you also um, do have 
the ability to manipulate individual teeth by double clicking an individual tooth. And you could even um, morph individual teeth by stretching them on that slider there. And what's really cool is you could actually mirror image tooth movement. So um, that little icon that I'm clicking down there will turn the contralateral tooth blue. So if the contralateral tooth is not blue, you're moving individual teeth. If you click the mirror feature, the contralateral tooth will turn up. Oh, here, let me try that one more time. Uh, if you click the, the mirror feature down there, the contralateral tooth will turn blue. And now when you move one, it mirrors the movement to the other side. And that also works for the scaling tools as well if you're stretching and expanding teeth. And again, um, shift to rotate, space bar to get the compass. It is super powerful um, feature. Here I'm just pushing them a little bit facial and you can see um, they're moving uh, together. And I'm going to and click. It's really cool because you click tooth by tooth and you get the mirror feature automatically staying on. And so this could be very powerful for your tooth setups, especially for a free software like this. Um, just remember guys, I mean, what they're doing here is they've, True Button has basically purchased this software, brought a development team on, is actively improving this uh, for you. It is a service that they're doing because they believe in digital dentistry. They believe that the future is um, democratization of design and they want everybody to have the power to be able to do that for themselves. And that's really cool. Um, there's no hidden fees. There's no export fees. You get unlimited amounts of export. And so, um, again, just take your time here. Play with the different tools. If you want to do an individual posterior tooth, it's kind of odd. You have to hit that um, icon on the bottom right that looks like kind of looks like a smiley face almost, but it's it's right next to the mirror feature, and it lets you double click and do in, that that guy right there. That is your single posterior tool. Um, and it lets you move individual posterior teeth. And remember, shift will give you that compass. You could also stretch um, and expand just like you could for the anteriors and morph. And you could uh, still mirror image posterior tooth movements as well. Um, and you even have the ability to um, actually delete teeth like premolars or molars, second molars, if you choose by going over here. And there's the delete premolar and delete molar um, icon right there. And I'll show you how that works in a minute. Let's just click it and see. Uh, typically, it's just going to erase the tooth that it says. So there, I clicked it, and it just popped out those second molars. No problem. You could also do that for premolars if you wanted to do a shortened dental arch as well that way. So once you have kind of um, the teeth where you want, and you're looking from all different angles, you uh, are going to be checking your occlusion and, and all sorts of things like that. Um, for me in particular, if I'm going against a lower edentulous ridge, I want the palatal cusps of my maxillary teeth to be centered over the crest of the mandibular ridge, um, setting this patient up for success so that I could have um, ideal forces put on that knife edge ridge on the lower when we get to doing that denture down there. I also want the occlusal plane to be about two thirds up the retromolar pad, which is a, a really good um, visualization with that occlusal plane disc that you see right there. Um, so once we feel like we have a pretty good setup, we're going to go ahead and fabricate the denture. It's going to ask you once again to just confirm um, all the kind of styles that you want. And I'm just going to click uh, re-click to final generation because it just does a, such a good job with festooning. And it's going to take you back to the main menu here and you're going to wait like a good five minutes. And it's actually, again, it, it's using AI cloud-based um, algorithms to digitally festoon your denture and add a posterior paddle seal automatically based off of the reference points that you selected. And so um, this is kind of cool. Just walk away, don't sit here and stare at the screen. Again, you know, people complain that there's a long wait here, but normally what you would be doing in other softwares is sitting there festooning uh, and adding posterior paddle seals. And so here we are now, it, it now has a soft tissue model and I selected, I think, um, I believe I selected a standard for festooning, uh, which is a really nice option because it gives you kind of a mild festooning that's easy to hand polish. And it gives you the tooth sockets already. Uh, again, all these steps normally take a significant amount of time in other softwares. It's doing it all through AI here. I usually just go ahead and accept and let it fabricate the denture for me. And here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and hit download and let's show you what I have. It gives you the files in STL ready to print. I'm gonna open them up. 
check them out. These are all the files it gives you. It gives you a bunch of files, but the one that you want is the uh, upper arch of teeth. It also gives you them in segments if you prefer that. And then it's gonna give you the upper tissue file. Let me see if I could find that right there. There we go. And it puts a support bar uh, for better um, accuracy during 3D printing. All right, guys, um, last little thing I wanna show you for those Prime Scan users out there that don't let you export a friggin' bite scan. Bring your upper lower jaw into Mesh Mixer. It is a free software that you could download. And you're going to highlight both files. I think you just hold Shift on the keyboard and highlight both of those files and hit Combine. And now they're gonna be one file. And then you could go to File, Export, save it as a binary STL and just call it byte. Um, and that's gonna give you a byte scan. So that's, I don't know why the Prime Scan doesn't let you export a byte. It's, I don't know, it's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard, but that's how you get a byte um, out of the Prime Scan. All right, I hope this helps guys. Uh, super powerful software and I enjoy seeing what you're doing with it. A lot of people are doing some amazing things out there.